Welcome back. Thank you for joining us for the second edition of By the Numbers, a special video edition of the smartoncrime.ca blog. My name is Anthony Piscitelli. I'm Supervisor of Planning and Research with the Waterloo Region Crime Prevention Council. And today we're going to take a look behind public opinion poll numbers. Those numbers that tell us what people think about the criminal justice system. By criminal justice system, I'm, I mean the courts, policing, and corrections. We've gone through the massive amounts of public opinion data that exist and we've pulled together 700 questions asked over the last 40 years about the criminal justice system, crime policies, and attitudes towards crime. We looked at polls from Gallup, Enveronics, Polera, the General Social Survey, Canadian Election Study, just to name a few. Working with this data from so many different sources over such a long period of time did create some challenges for us. For example, not everyone asks the same questions in the same way. Sometimes people ask a question for a long time and then they stop asking it, or they change the wording a little bit. That being said, enough evidence exists to show some interesting trends. So let's begin by looking at confidence with police. The chart you see goes back to 1975 and shows the percentage of people expressing dissatisfaction with the police. Each line that you see on this chart represents a question that was asked by one survey firm on multiple surveys over time. You can see the lines vary a little bit and these differences are likely due to question wording and the different methods used in the different surveys. The main message here is one of stability. Little has changed over the last 40 years in attitudes towards police. Dissatisfaction typically runs between 10 and 20 percent. So let's now go and look at some other parts of the criminal justice system. This chart shows attitudes towards the courts, judges, the parole system, and the criminal justice system generally. Again, this chart shows the percentage of people expressing dissatisfaction. The first thing that jumps out at us is police dissatisfaction had maxed out at about 20 percent, but these numbers are all much higher than that. You may also notice two questions about the parole system with very different results. This really shows that wording can change perceptions. The question with the higher line on the chart was a question asked by Enveronics. It says, in general, would you say you have a lot of confidence, some confidence, little confidence, or no confidence in parole boards? The other question around parole boards was asked by the General Social Survey. It stated, do you think that the parole system does a good job, an average job, or a poor job of releasing offenders who are not likely to commit another crime. Next we notice a curve. We see from the 1980s to the mid-1990s dissatisfaction with the criminal justice system rose. Then from the mid-1990s to today it declined steadily. Perhaps not coincidentally, in the 1980s crime was rising in Canada. But since 1991 it's been on a steady decline. So what do you think? Are crime rates and public opinion re related? We'd love to hear your comments. You can do so by posting below on this blog, by posting on our Facebook page, or by sending us a message on Twitter at Preventing Crime. So what does this mean for public policy in Canada? Does public opinion influence politicians' decision? Or do politicians influence public attitudes? Please join us next time on By the Numbers as we explore the answer to these questions.